The Elephant Man is based on the real-life case of Joseph Merrick and his Dr. Frederick Treves' memoirs. Merrick was born with a condition that caused growing skin and tumor-like deformities and for him to have physical traits akin to that of an elephant, hence the title of this film and what he unfortunately became known as to many people. The film, however, breaks through this ill-fated, more derogatory title, revealing the human behind the condition and the doctor that relieved him from a life of being a circus attraction and feared by the ignorant and heartless. Hey everyone, this is Jan Man, and this is a look back at the impactful 1980 film, The Elephant Man, directed by David Lynch. Director David Lynch isn't known for movies that are exactly sentimental or even straightforward, with more moody, intricate pieces that require quite a bit of thought to understand, such as Eraserhead, Blue Velvet, and Mulholland Drive. The Elephant Man is the exceptional, heart-rendering, more traditionally structured narrative, rather than the films Lynch tends to make that contain moving narrative puzzle pieces. And aside from the more surreal opening involving an elephant attacking Merrick's mother, with the implication being that this attack, real or not, had some effect on her son developing his condition, the film is based in a believable reality. It is shot in black and white, which is a rarity with more modern films, yet suits the tone and time period very well, giving it a more historically based documentary feel to replicate a late 1800s London. In fact, looking at some shots of this movie in color, it really takes away from the more lived-in elements of the film. Take for example the way in which the black and white accentuates the dark and foggy late-night London streetways the cramped and human quarters in which Merrick is kept by the abusive freak show runner Mr. Bites, the lonely and at times cold hospital, as well as how it conveys the dirty sack and rag like robes used to cover Merrick's head and body, and the makeup used on John Hurt to turn him into Merrick, all of which ironically look far more immediate and realistic than when colorized. Speaking of the makeup and going beyond the more captivating black and white cinematography by Freddie Francis, the movie's success hangs as largely, if not more so, on the makeup effects for Merrick. If the makeup did not work, the narrative would have had an uphill battle, capturing the audience's complete buy-in and engagement. Lynch and Francis, however, do a commendable job of slowly unveiling Merrick's appearance almost conditioning the audience so that they, unlike characters who encounter Merrick for the first time in the movie, aren't so shocked at his appearance and can look at him as a human being. The team behind the makeup do an incredible job too. Never does it come across as looking like makeup on screen. In fact, the makeup effects are so well done and realistic that it forced the Academy Awards to add a Best Makeup category after outcry for this film not being given recognition for its efforts and achievement in that department. Credit also has to be given to the screenplay for its depiction of both Merrick and Dr. Treves. Treves is painted as a clinical man who wants to learn from Merrick's condition for medical knowledge, but also a humanist taking Merrick away from Mr. Bites, who is only after using Merrick for monetization based on people's provocation to gaze and gawk at him at freak shows as though he were an animal. When Trees learns of the quote Elephant Man and the audience follows his discovery and we see the conditions in which he lives and how he's being treated, his reaction of tears involuntarily falling is one that most anyone with a sense of humanity would likewise share. This battle that both Merrick and Treves face for Merrick's human identity culminates in several memorable, if not heart-wrenching scenes, one of which being when a mob corners him after Mr. Bite sneaks into the hospital and takes him, but is eventually freed by other circus performers when they witness and empathize with him. When Merrick shouts down the reactionary mob in a last-ditch effort to claim his dignity and humanity, it pulls at the heartstrings. There are also other moments that are sad, but also tender and quietly uplifting, such as when Merrick cries because a woman he finds beautiful 
is actually being nice to him, something he is not accustomed to, or when he speaks on his own accord for the first time, showing that he can think and develop his thoughts the same way most others can, if not more so, or simply seeing him get his own room at the hospital, have the ability to have hobbies, and have Treves or others visit with him or take him to theater productions, all so that he can have some semblance of life despite his debilitating condition. It also can't be overstated how it's just not the screenplay or cinematography or direction and makeup that bring both Dr. Treves and Merrick alive. Both Anthony Hopkins and John Hurt give outstanding performances. Each have been featured in numerous films and have been acknowledged for numerous roles, but dare it be said, these two performances are near the top, if not at the top of their careers. Hopkins epitomizes the intelligence of a doctor while also being perceptive in how to handle those around him, whether it be coyness to Mr. Bites so that he can eventually get Merrick away from him, or the kindness, care, and concern he shows to Merrick. For an unrecognizable hurt underneath full makeup, the range of emotions that he delivers, which comes primarily from his eyes or brief lip gestures, alongside limited body movements or miming, is remarkable. Between the outstanding makeup job and his performance, Merrick, his emotions, and his struggles feel and seem so horrifying, so real, yet all the while so inspiring and uplifting, leaving us with an honorable depiction and tribute to a man who lived a life that was so unimaginable to most. <laughs>